Gov Guam is going to re recalculate the financial impact of regional migrants, and Palau has some really big clans. All this on the Micronesian News Broadcast. And in our very first story, coming to us from the Pacific News Center, Governor Lou Leon Guerrero, she's actually the first lady governor of Guam, said Gov Guam will have to figure out, I mean change, the way it calculates the financial impact of hosting regional migrants. For your information, when he says regional migrant, when she says regional migrants, it obviously means people from the Marshalls, Palau, and the Federated States of Micronesia, those regional migrants. She also did not send a compact impact report to the Department of Interior as regarded by law. Now let's take a look at this. Why would she do that? Why would she not send the compact impact report? I mean, obviously, besides the reason of needing to figure out a system that effectively and appropriately calculates the cost of hosting a regional migrant. Apparently, the federal government, as in the United States federal government, doesn't trust GovGuam's figures when it comes to reporting its compact impacts. GovGuam reported just recently that a total amount of $1.21 billion dollars has been spent by GovGuam to host regional migrants and all the services that they've been using from 2004 to 2017. And she will not submit a report until the issue is resolved. Now, I had just said Palau has lots of big clams, and it's true. And I'm gonna tell you why they have a bunch of big clams. Recently, as, as of April 12, Palau has opened the largest giant clam farm in the whole entire world. So the brand new facility, which is called the Palau Mariculture Demonstration Center in Malakal Karor, had its official opening on, as I said, April 12. It's, it's currently holding over thousands of seedlings for giant clams of three types, and it plans to sell them to local and foreign markets around the world. It actually plans to hold millions of seedlings in which it hopes to export to foreign and domestic markets. Besides that, the PMDC will also promote livelihood, diversification, and it also aims to demonstrate and advance food security for the small island nation of Palau. Distribution will be up by despite this year, September, when the seedlings will be at least three centimeters in length. They plan to export to places like Germany, France, California, and I would like to I would like to assume other markets where seafood is a really big hit. So obviously Japan or Taiwan or China, and it also will be going to local markets as well. I gotta say, congratulations. Here is our take. What was that clip? So, in regards to the first story about Gov Guam trying to figure out a system to appropriately uh, calculate the cost of hosting regional migrants. So, if you remember, it was, I think, earlier this year or last year, it was the senatorial race involving Clint Ridgell and others. So, during the senatorial race, race in Guam, Clint Ridgell, then cr currently Senator Clint Ridgell, spoke against another candidate who outlined the things Guam faces because of FAS migrants, namely namely the burden Guam faces when it comes to hosting and paying these migrants. Senator Rigel made a good point in his speech. The feds don't trust Gov Guam's figures because it only takes into account what services Micronesians use and doesn't include the contributions made by Micronesians. I mean people from Micronesia when they move to America or any American territory, they still have to pay taxes. So it's not like they're leeching off the system. They still have to work and pay for it. We must also not forget that the time, that time Governor Guerrero flew thousands of miles, most likely on taxpayer money, to Washington DC to talk about five key issues impacting Guam, most of which targeted Micronesians. And how about that state of the colony address we, re we addressed in our last video? Was it our last video? Yeah, in which the COFA, the Compact of Free Association, was the very first issue concerning Gov Guam's future, I mean financial stability and financial future. 
you know, maybe if Guam was, you know, independent and not a colony, it wouldn't be facing these issues. You know, we understand that a lot of Micronesians leave their homes and the islands in part due to the stagnant nature of job growth and availability, availability of jobs and opportunities in the islands. But hey, we're humans who want to advance and improve the lives of ourselves and our families. It's what we want. It's what everybody wants. And advance the future. We are more than just numbers. We are not just micro. We're people just like you and we want to be treated with dignity and respect just like everybody else. And opinion number two with Kalal making that giant clam farm. It's amazing. Um, you know, I really think that's a good thing because they've identified something that they have that they can use to their benefit to promote a healthy living, sustainability, and food security whilst making money off of it because, hey, that's the type of world we live in. You don't have money, you don't survive. Um, I wish they could do that here in the FSM. I think they are. I think it was supposed to be sea cucumbers, but that's not allowed. Um, yeah. Great job, Palau. You're making lots of strides. I mean, the, the PNMS Act, the Palau app, and then this now with the giant clam farm and your, that uh, Palau pledge. Dang, you guys are making strides, and I congratulate you for leading the way. And now, here are the announcements. And here are the announcements. Um, we want to acknowledge the, that this, year, this week is Easter week. And for people of the Christian religion, this is a very sacred week. It celebrates the death and rebirth of Jesus Christ. And we want to acknowledge that. So, good on you. We also would like to announce two events that are being held by the College of Micronesia during April 26th. So in the morning from like, I think it's 10.30 to 2.30, it'll be the CEO annual health fair where there'll be like screenings and checkups and informational talks and pamphlets and whatnot. And of course, the thing that really gathers everybody together is food. And there'll also be a F4 festival, which will be from 4 to 7 p.m. at Spanish World Ballpark. So come out and support the next generation of entrepreneurs in this nation. We also want to say that the 2019 to 2020 Vital Rotary Scholarship is now available. Contact RotaryPonte at gmail.com or go to Rotary Club Bonte Facebook page and contact them. So get your application and submit it before July 1st, 2019. I'm PJ, this is the Micronesia News Broadcast, and now here's my brother with the weather reports. Hey guys, this is Norman and this is the weather for tomorrow. 28 degrees Celsius high during the day and 24 degrees Celsius low during the night. With thunderstorms and 80% chance of precipitation and 77% optimism. Sunrise will be at 6.17 a.m. and sunset will be at 6.35 p.m. Northeast winds 50 to 20 knots and seas will be at 7 to 8 feet high. Thanks for tuning in to the Micronesia News Broadcast. Tune in every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time.